We're downtown Las Vegas. Welcome to Synthetic Oil Protection. We got the showgirls, the casinos, and now we're headed over in the 59 Kitty Cat to go do the oil change, the uh, transmission fluid change on the Honda Pilot. Let's do it. We're going to the farmer's market. So it's right over here on Main Street. The Friday farmer's market. There it is. If you're new to the channel and you want your vehicle to run longer and stay longer, definitely subscribe. All you do is tap this little subscribe. Welcome to Synthetic Oil Protection. I'm your host, Eben, and today we're going to be doing a fluid change, the transmission fluid, on this beautiful 2010 Honda Pilot. Now, this is a work truck. And this thing has 314,000 miles on her. And uh, we're going to give you the mileage right now. Let's see here. 314. That's right. 314,000 miles. And we're going to be answering the question, will a uh, transmission fluid change on an old vehicle cause the transmission to slip? So a lot of people, they always say, don't ever change the transmission. Well, I'm going to tell you that's wrong. You always want to change the transmission because if you don't take care of it, you're going to actually wreck the transmission because the fluid thickens. And for every 18 degrees hotter a fluid runs, it oxidizes at twice the rate. It's called exponential breakdown of fluids. Speaking of exponential breakdown, we got a very special fluid we're going to be installing today on the vehicle. This is called AMSOIL 100% Synthetic ATF Fluid. 100% synthetic, so it has a much higher film strength. If you think of little particles like molecules like little uh, uh, basically beads that are perfectly round that's the 100 percent synthetic and then the other stuff would be a synthetic blend which they can call full synthetic when it's only 25 percent synthetic so that's right a full synthetic etf fluid can actually be called full synthetic when it's only 25 percent synthetic so you're going to see the 100 percent synthetic go in and this is the easy pack we're going to be using this to squeeze it in through a straw in the transmission we're going to be draining the, the fluid. We're also going to be taking a ride around the block with Carrie, the owner of this vehicle. This is her personal work vehicle. She drives it about 25, 30,000 miles a year, but she goes back and forth from California. And this is the farmer's market. So you're going to meet her later. She's going to tell you how it shifts and uh, give you the feedback. So let's go ahead and, uh, well, drain her down. All right, we got our standard wrench. This is a 3 8 uh, ratchet. If you want to get more leverage, I recommend getting a breaker bar. They're usually about a foot and a half long. Same thing, 3 8 inch. And now all we do is crack her loose. We already got her cracked loose. Super easy to get to on the Honda. That's our transmission right there. This is our drain plug. You don't even need any special tools. All you do is stick a regular old ratchet in there. We already cracked her loose earlier with that long breaker bar. That allows you to get more leverage. And now all we do is drain down the liquid cherry. And uh, in a minute after we drain this down, we're gonna be pumping in the new liquid cherry, which is my favorite part. And that cherry is amazing. So here we go, a three, two, one. And there she blows. Oh, you got a spitter. I got splooged on. I got a money shot. Uh-oh. I got a money shot right in the cheek. And you say, Eben, why do you get up in the morning? I get up in the morning to lube to love, love to lube. And if it ain't wet, it ain't protected. If it ain't protected, it ain't uh, wet. That's why the wetter the better. So I got to get this, uh, this money off here. Oh, I haven't had one of those in a while, but they come with the job. You know, it's dirty jobs. What else are you going to do? Yikes. We almost got the camera. So now she's pretty much drained. And that's about uh, 3.6 quarts is what the pan holds. And that's called the transmission pan, which you're looking at, that bottom part right here. That's your transmission pan. Up above is the torque converter. Now that torque converter actually does not get drained. So when you change your fluid, this is about an eight quart system, but you're only changing about 3.6 quarts. And a lot of people, they ask, so why do they hear that people say if you change your transmission fluid, it's going to slip? And what a lot of people are referring to is an old transmission 
that's been neglected and someone does a flush on it where they use a, a power system and they actually flush the fluid through it with a powered motor and um, a transmission shop has that but doing a pan drop and only changing half the fluid and filling it with the virgin liquid cherry you're not going to slip your transmission i've never had one um, i've personally done about 100 transmission fluid changes on the channel with all different cars i've never had one slip ever i'm going to be honest with you but if you go to a transmission shop and have that machine do a flush on it you can have a small chance of having something happen very unlikely though um, so you're always better off changing it now we're going to get out our parts cleaner and clean this magnet all right now it's time to clean our magnet that is basically the drain plug what are we going to clean it with our ams oil brake parts cleaner what we call this right here niagara niagara falls in a can that's what we call this that's how much punching power this sucker's got here we go on the count of three a three two one Now all we do is rotate her a little bit. All right, we got her all nice and clean. We thread her on. Now on this, it's all aluminum, so you don't have to go that tight. A lot of people think you gotta really muscle it. You don't need a breaker bar to tighten it down or nothing like that. So all we're gonna do is just shove this back, just like so. We're gonna wipe her up right here. Just give her a little wiperoo, like that. And then all we do is throw on our nice fresh drain plug that's nice and clean just like that throw her on make sure you keep the crush washer the same way you take it off you're fine reusing it if it's really old obviously replace it but if it's not and it looks fine you're good and uh, here we go show you how tight right right about there that's it about 30 pounds and that's it. You don't have to go that tight. We'll do our final little spray with our parts cleaner. We'll just clean her up a little bit like that. And that's it. Nice and clean. Just wipe her up with a towel. And that's it. That way you won't smell any ATF fluid. Now it's time to put in the liquid cherry, but I want to show you where it's going. It's going right into this little dipstick down there. And you're gonna see this little hose we got in the dipstick tube. And that goes right down into there. Right. No, just focusing it. Right there. And that's the dipstick tube. And basically pretty easy to get to. And now all we're gonna do is we got this little hose. We got this at like an auto parts store. And this will fit right down the dipstick hole. And um, now we're going to use our Easy Pack and squeeze it in. This is our Amsoil Easy Pack. This is good for 1,100 pounds of pressure, so you can really squeeze it. You can pick it up with one finger. And the other great thing about it is when you recycle it, it doesn't take up as much space in the uh, garbage recycling bins as this bottle. This bottle takes up a lot of space, where this, when it's empty, it's like nothing. These are all the specifications it meets and exceeds. So it meets and exceeds the Honda spec. And uh, that's right here for Honda Acura. And you're good for double the severe service. So say you're towing or plowing snow or doing something with a lot of pressure on that trans, a lot of engine braking, stuff like that. You're comfortably good for double the severe service interval. So let's just say Honda, if you're towing a small trailer with this, a thousand pounds or something, and Honda says to change it every 15,000, you can go and now change it at 30,000 with this ATF fluid. And that's because the fluid doesn't oxidize like the other fluids. And why is because of the 100% synthetic film strength. It keeps the metal parts separated, less friction, less heat, less wear. You'll have faster shifts. And uh, the other great thing about it is this has to be about four times better to handle double the length. So since oxidation is exponential, this is actually about four times better than what came in your actual car. So that's how it's different. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, snip our tip right here and squeeze in the liquid cherry. All right, it's that time to squeeze in the liquid cherry. This right here is the very fluid that some people climb over mountains. Others 
scuba dive under seas. And some drool on buses just to get their hands on the liquid cherry. But you don't have to do that. You can actually order it right down in the description section with my personal link. When you use my link, I would be your go-to Amsoil dealer in the future. I can always answer all your questions on the products. This is what I personally do about 50, 60 hours a week as a professional U-Luber. And if you're new to the channel and you want your vehicle to run longer and stay longer, definitely subscribe to the channel. You'll be able to learn a lot about how to take care of your car to get it to last exponentially longer, two to four times longer easily. So what are we gonna do? Come here, snip the tip just like this, shaboom. And now all we do is squeeze in the liquid cherry. I almost jumped the gun. I forgot I gotta pop the safety seal. We got this little teeny like safety tab. Sometimes you can get it by finger. Other times you just gotta poke it in. I got it. So we got her by finger, just like that. And now all we do is thread her on. And this is my favorite part, the most satisfying thing in the world. To stick it in and squeeze in the liquid cherry. We got our drill. Oh, that was a little premature. Oh my God. We had a small accident. But look how pure the liquid cherry is. Almost untouchable. So here we go. Now all we do is just shove it in right here. Like so. And now let the liquid cherry flow. And there she goes. And now we call this the toothpaste method. We roll from the back and roll forward, just like that. And you just wanna double check, make sure it's going in where it's supposed to. Another thing you can do as you're rolling it in, you can also take a glance underneath the vehicle and make sure nothing's leaking just to make sure. So we squeezed in about half a quart. We're gonna take you underneath the car so you can take a look and see nothing's leaking. So we already got half a quart squeezed in of our six point, our 3.6 quarts. So we got nothing else underneath there and we can actually yank our old trans fluid out. This is our old 3.6 quarts of fluid. That's our old stuff. So nothing's dripping. So we're good to keep squeezing her in. So that little straw runs right down there to the dipstick tube. So on this job, I highly recommend getting the easy pack. Um, the, the gallons are okay, but you're gonna need to get a small hose to, to put it in, where if you just grab the four easy packs, you'll be good to go. Just roll her in. And there's our gargling. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our gallon and refill this and fill her up. Oh, and I'd love to know if you've done a transmission fluid change, let us know in the comment section below. How did it work out? How'd your car shift afterwards when you tried the uh, Signature Series ATF fluid? And remember, we do the end of month giveaway every last Saturday of the month. Next one coming up September 24th, 11 a.m. So remember to leave that comment and that's your ticket into the end of month giveaway. We give $100 gift cards away, snap on tools, you just never, never know if you could be in to win, and we randomly select people from down there. All right, we're back out with Kerry, the owner of this beautiful work truck. And we did the power foam, which cleaned the valves, the injectors, the uh, all the carbon buildup, should I say, on the heads. And we did the transmission fluid. Uh, 3.6 quarts of the eight, I think it's 8.6 quart system, so it holds quite a bit. So we only changed 30, 30 some percent of the fluid. And we'll see what she thinks. I can tell right now it's, it's shifting beautiful. It changed already. Wow. No, I can tell. Wow. The thing is, you didn't fix my glasses. I know. We got to get some epoxy right in between her eyes. Her glasses are broken. <laughs> <laughs> got to get some two ton epoxy for those suckers. Harbor Freight. Yeah, Harbor Freight. Right? Yeah. That's where I'm going, Harbor Freight. So we're a beautiful downtown Las Vegas, this glowing city that never really sleeps. I mean, it slept a little bit during COVID, but now it's it's back open. Are you up all night? Sometimes. What do you do? Oh my God. Video people? I can't even say. 
Is he he even, free monster? What does he do at nighttime? The underground. But uh, um, Changing people's oil in Fremont, downtown Fremont. I've done that. I've done night editions at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, this baby runs like a charm. Isn't that killer? It's so smooth right now. You know, people are always like, you got to get a new car. I'm like, this thing is beautiful. What are you, ta what are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> years of burnt oil when you burn oil a lot of people they don't realize what happens to it they say does it just boil off like a soup really when you burn oil it goes out your exhaust pipe so basically all that tar and years of burnt oil when your oil your engine consumes oil basically what's going on is that's going out your exhaust pipe it's clogging up your catalytic converters it's clogging up your uh, exhaust manifolds and basically it suffocates the whole uh, motor. Woo! Look at all that carbon. Woo! Holy cow. We got double smokers. So we relieved a lot of that. And uh, we also... Um, Check engine light off? No way. It is. No way the power foam got that stupid check engine light off. <laughs> that damn thing wouldn't go away. That is hysterical. That is funny. We got that damn... I should get it small now. Yeah. Got that check engine light off. And uh, so yeah, you get all that tar out of there and then the transmission fluid um, a lot of people always ask, do you want to flush it? You don't have to flush it. You can just do the basic drain and fill, clean the magnet like we did. It's too easy. And uh, now we can come back. And usually if this was my car, I'd probably come back in about, I don't know, 5,000 miles. I'd do another drain and fill depending on what it looks like. And then if it was still kind of murky looking, I'd do another one. But the detergents in this fluid are going to exponentially clean it up even more. And um, now we're back at the farmer's market. Let me show you what it looks like here. We'll take you inside. So what's the overall difference, would you say? It's running incredibly smooth. It's like a new car. Wow. All right, so there it is. You saw the results. The transmission was definitely worth changing the fluid. A lot of people, they say, my car is old. Should I not change it? Well, if you don't change it, you're definitely going to wreck it. So you might as well change it. Amazing. Yeah. And now we'll go inside. And uh, yeah, 315,000 miles on that thing. Come on, She's humming. Yep, she's gonna, she's gonna give you the tour. So this is the Friday Farmer's Market, 9 to 2 p.m. right there. 9 to 2. And she'll give you the tour. So how come, you, why did you start this Farmer's Market? Well, the thing is, I used to come here with my two little boys and I'd go to the Farmer's Markets in Las Vegas and they were terrible. Uh -huh. And so I knew when my husband came to run a company in Las Vegas that I couldn't be feeding my family crops. All right. And I knew the farmers and I knew the organic, uh, importance of organics and their, and their growing practices. So I would fill up huge coolers wow. filled with organic produce so I could have the best stuff for my family. Wow. And I was also a grower myself. Wow. So I knew, and I would ask, and find out, investigate, like, what are they doing with our food? Uh -huh. And so I used to come out here to Las Vegas, my husband would work all week, then we'd go back to California, where I am now, in Malibu, uh -huh. and I was growing, and so I would bring all this great produce. And then I had a bumper crop of uh, produce one year, uh -huh. and I went to Michael Mina, to his restaurant. Wow. And I was fighting at the loading dock because they were like, you have to go through the, the corporate channels. And Michael Mina came along. He said, what do you got? And he bought everything I had. Wow. So he said, bring me more, bring me more. Because the chefs really want the best stuff. Wow. And so that's my job to help them 
co-create. Like right now, I'm going up to Summit, ah. to the, uh, the top of the hill there, yeah. delivered to Gino, who's the chef wow. there at the Summit. That's cool. And then I go to uh, the Harlow Steakhouse and La Strega and Bazaar Meat and wow. uh, a new restaurant that's opening up, Bala, Italian wow. restaurant that's great. Libertine Social. So the list goes on of chefs who have been dying for the best stuff, and that's my job to get it into their hands. And then we have a showcase here of wow. the best stuff you can taste it and bring it home for your own family. I love it. So what's one of your favorites over here? Show us one of your favorites. These are passion fruits, and they grow in my farm in Malibu. Wow. And the wrinklier they are, the better they are. Wow. And you can just rip, rip the top off of them and you'll be able to see the beautiful juice that's inside. Wow. Mm -mm. That looks good. Passion fruit flavor. Awesome. And you eat the seeds. Wow. It smells good. Mm. Unbelievable. Have you tried one? Yeah. I've had one before. They're really great. good. Yeah. What else? Oh. Anything else? We have the tomatoes. We're packing them up for. All right. Step right now. These little babies are called dry farm early girls, and the farmer takes the the, t the plant and starves it of water. Wow. And what it produces is this incredibly sweet, juicy tomato. Tomato. Wow. If you have a knife here, I'm going to give you a piece. Yeah, just rip it. I don't have a knife on me. Just a key. Look at wow. that. Wow. Have a bite. Have a best tomato you'll ever have. See what we got. Mmm. That is super juicy. Look at that juice. Delicious. Mmm. And it's mm. great. I boil them, put some oregano on them, an olive oil. Mm -hmm. Put them in the toaster oven or the air fryer on low heat with onions and garlic. And I put them into a salad or into a sauce. They're really good, aren't they? It's beautiful. Yeah. All right, so you guys saw the farmer market. Anything else we should give them before we say goodbye? Anything else? Try this, Evan. All right. This is called a Japanese bumblebee. All right. You see the gorgeous stripe on it? You want yellow or red? Uh, red. Let's see what we got. You can come in. Mm. Isn't that nice? Really good. Japanese grower. That's amazing. Japanese variety. Mm -hmm. Look at this guy here. Mm. That's and gorgeous. Everything has these incredible antioxidants and are fresh picked right out of the ground. Wow. I love it. We're just packing up. Yeah. But when you're here, it's prolific, abundant. Come on down. Yep. For the best produce. Yep. And you can see every all organic market in Las Vegas. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. So definitely come on over here and check out everything else we did to Carrie's beautiful work truck. That thing's getting better every day. We'll see you back. Yeah, we'll see you back next year. Thanks to the guys. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you back next time right here on Synthetic Oil Protection. Cheers to protection, protection, protection.